Hello. It is still Women's History Month. So, since recently the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction was announced, I thought today we would talk about all 16 books on the long list, what I think is going to make it to the short list, and what I have read so far. This is going to be a long one, so buckle up, baby. <laughs> also, why not? Come on. Okay, so if you don't know about the Women's Prize for Fiction, what? Okay, to be fair, I didn't really know anything about it until a couple of years ago, so I guess it's okay. And now you do know, so huzzah. We're doing better already. The Women's Prize for Fiction was conceptualized after the 1991 Booker Prize shortlist had no women on it, despite more than 60% of published books that year being by female authors. A group of men and women from all across the literary spectrum, librarians and publishers and agents, who else is there? Journalists, reviewers, anyways, all of them got together to have a bunch of wine and talk about whether or not this was a problem. They decided that, yeah, it's a problem. And that got the ball rolling on the women's prize. Oh, also, before this point when there were no women on that specific list, only 10% of the books ever put on the short list for the booker were by women. So it wasn't just a one year weird thing that happened. It was a thing that was happening. So yeah, they worked for a bunch of years. And then in 1996, the very first orange prize for fiction was born. It was awarded to Helen Dunmore for A Spell of Winter, which I've never read, but I'm gonna think about it now and tell you what. I wondered what the name Orange was about. Turns out that in the UK, Orange is or was a telecommunications company. So they're just the ones who sponsored the prize. I didn't know that because it's Canada outside here. It has since been through a few sponsorship changes and now it's just the Women's Prize for Fiction. So there, that's your history lesson. It's over. Let's get to the books. The Women's Prize for Fiction became an interest of mine when I learned that one of my favorite books ever, I talk about it all the time, so I won't mention it, but it rhymes with a schmong of a schmilly. Won the prize in 2012. And now I am just chasing that high. Of course, the Women's Prize books tend to focus on issues that are important to women, which is excellent. That's great. It's nice. Unfortunately, for me specifically, something that tends to be relatable to a lot of women is terrible things happening to children because, oh, it sucks. Those are really important stories and they can help so many people feel less alone if they've gone through a tragedy. So they're important. They are important stories. For me, it can be really difficult to want to pick up a lot of the books that are nominated on these lists because of that theme. Even though I know that the books are probably excellent and these things are dealt with well, it's just so hard for me to read. The long list consists of 16 books. 16. Which will then be shortlisted to six books on April 28th this year. And the winner will be announced July 7th. I have already read a few of the long listed books, so I can give a bit of my opinion on those. Otherwise, I have just read all of the synopsis 
and looked a little bit into them. And I mean, I know that the authors don't actually get to write their own synopsis. So th that might just have nothing to do with the actual book or how good or bad it is. But it's all I've got to go on. So it's what I'm going to go on until I read them all anyways. But that's going to take a minute. Also, the covers. Don't judge a book by its cover. Psh. I mean, it's not that important, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to judge them on their covers sometimes. Okay, here we go. Oh, and this is just whatever. No order. I just wrote them down. Uh, number one, Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I have read this one. I loved this one. I have a review, a little spoiler-free one, so you can check that out if you want. I do still plan on putting a spoiler one out, but <laughs> I keep not doing it. So one day, probably. This one has a lot of mixed reviews. Um, some people really, really love it. Other people don't. But yeah, I am firmly in camp. This book was great. But I also think it's the kind of book that benefits from going in completely blind. So I don't want to talk about it, but you should read it really good. Then you can come back here and tell me what you thought. I'm gathering evidence for my theory that it's a great book. So, Next, Consent by Annabelle Lyon. I have also read this one and I didn't love it. It's not my kind of thing. It wasn't it wasn't for me. I can see why some people would really enjoy this one, but for me personally, it was a no. And I can tell that it's really good and that there are layers. And if I liked the story enough to dive into them, I bet it's really interesting, but I didn't like it enough to care about that. This one is about two different sets of sisters. One is a set of twins, one is an older sister and a younger sister, and it's both of their stories, terrible things happen to one of the sisters in each group. The book is called Consent, so keep that in mind. These terrible things that happen are connected. There is something that connects them, but like I said, I don't know, it wasn't for me. The author is Canadian, so that's pretty cool. And the book is set just a couple hours away from where I live. So that did keep me interested a little bit more. It was fun to read that part of it. So yeah, anyways, not for me, but I can see it being to other people's tastes. Oh, there is kind of an order. I put the ones that I have read first. I thought, ooh, this ne I've read this next one too. That's, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I wrote this. Come on. Next, Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I think I'm saying that right. Sersha. Siobhan, Nisha, I know how to say them, but every time I read them, my brain short circuits. I am halfway through this book and I did not expect to like it at all. I went to the library though to check out what books from this list they had and this was the only one that was available for me to take right then. So I said, whatever, I'll take it. Yeah, I fully expected to hate every second of it, but turns out I actually really like it. Here, I'll read you the synopsis and you can see why I was pretty sure I was going to hate it. Ava, newly arrived in Hong Kong from Dublin, spends her days teaching English to rich children. Julian is a banker, a banker who likes to spend money on Ava to have sex and discuss fluctuating currencies with her. But when she asks whether he loves her, he cannot say more than, I like you a great deal. Enter Edith, a Hong Kong born lawyer, striking and ambitious. Edith takes Ava to the theater and leaves her tulips in the hallway. Ava wants to be her and wants her. And then Julian writes to tell Eva he's coming back to Hong Kong. Should Ava return to the easy compatibility of her life with Julian or take a leap into the unknown with Edith? So yeah, it sounds like a dysfunctional relationship, probably a love triangle and cheating, which are three things that usually just, ugh, oh, they make me not enjoy a book. But. Okay, so I'm reading it, and the synopsis makes it sound like Julian is just going to be this absolute butthole. But turns out, Ava, also a total butthole. She's got her own problems, let's say. She, she's in this 
relationship willingly. And yeah, she she is contributing to it just fine. She is playing her role. And this book has this dry wit to it and it's really clever and it's actually pretty funny. I just, the main character is unlikable and I like that about her. I don't know where I'm gonna end up landing on this one when I finish it, but so far, I like it. The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. I just started this one. I am over halfway. It is a thriller. I was so surprised to see a thriller on this list. And this was also the one when I read all of them that I was most excited to pick up because it sounds really cool. It's about these two women who are going through ugly divorce. They meet on a train and they decide to kill each other's husbands. I know. What? It sounds so good. I mean, don't kill people, obviously, but it, I, I like where this one's going. So yeah, our main character, Hannah, goes to do the thing and she meets this big, drunk, hairy man who, knowing him, makes her wonder what's going on? Is Ginny, the other lady, telling the truth? I don't, I don't know because I'm not done, but it's been great and I am enjoying it. I have been in a bit of a thriller mood lately, so that is also helping. I went through a phase last year where I read like 10 thrillers in a row and by the end of it, I would read the first page and be like, the husband did it, next. I just was over it. So I'm finally in the mood for one again, and this one's up for a prize, so it's been really good. I just, mm, I am liking it. I don't know that it'll make the short list being a thriller. I hope it does, but I don't know, we'll see. Next, Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. I really like the sound of this one. Look at the cover, number one. It's beautiful. I really am digging it. And there is a little blurb on it by the Times that says, a latter day Daphne du Maurier, which if you know me, you know I adored Rebecca by her. So if this has the same creepy, eerie kind of a vibe, like I am here for it. This story is about two 51 year old twins. I think there's like three books on the long list that are about twins. They live with their mom in isolation and poverty. They grow their own food, they hunt, they, they're odd. And when their mom dies, suddenly they have to kind of fend for themselves and figure things out and a bunch of secrets from the mom start being revealed. Oh, here, it sounds good, listen. Unsettled Ground is a heart-stopping novel of betrayal and resilience, love and survival. It is a portrait of life on the fringes of society that explores with dazzling emotional power how we can build our lives on broken foundations and spin light from darkness. So yeah, I don't know, sounds great. Next. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. I just finished Priest Daddy by her and I've talked about it a little bit here. I liked it. I like the first half better than the second half because she is a poet and the second half gets really poemy. Whereas the first half was really blunt and raw and funny. So it just felt like two different books like midway through. It was still really great overall and I'm interested in reading more of her work. So this one sounds weird and awesome. I have a hold on the audiobook right now, so soon cannot wait to shove it in my greedy little ears. For what I can gather from the synopsis is this is about a online personality whose work just kind of goes viral every time they post, it blows up. And they are traveling, seeing all of their adoring fans, but they live a lot of their life on the internet, which they call the portal in this book. And she's kind of being sucked into the portal and everybody in the portal is asking questions like, what is life? Why are we here? Is this all there is? Which, yeah, sounds like the internet. So yeah, she's really deep in internet land. And then her mom texts her and is like, you have to come home right now. Now. Get home. Now. 
it sounds like it's going to be about real life and the internet and, you know, what life actually is. It sounds interesting to me and I am going to read it. Oh, and I'm going to put all of the proper synopsis, like links to them, in the description. So, don't worry. If anything sounds interesting to you, you can click those and go read a proper prose. Prose. Because of You by Dawn French. Uh, this one's probably great. I feel no desire to read it. Because, you guessed it, dead baby. It is about two mothers. They both go to the hospital on the same day to have babies, and they both have baby girls. But one leaves the hospital with a healthy little baby, and the other one does not. And yeah, so that right there makes me think it's probably not going to be for me right now. At least until I bring this baby. I just, look, look at it. Look at how big my belly is. Sorry. At least until me and this baby are home and safe and happy <laughs> but, um, and healthy, then maybe I'll feel better about picking it up. But for now, I'm pretty sure my anxiety will just spike if I read it. I bet you it's great. I honestly bet you it's really good. But the synopsis says, 17 years later, the gods who keep watch over broken-hearted mothers wreak mighty revenge, and the truth starts rolling, terrible and deep toward them all. The power of mother love will be tested to its limits, perhaps beyond. So my guess is that the babies were switched somehow at the hospital. That's what I gather from that. I could be completely wrong. I don't know. You should read it and then let me know if I can handle it because we're tight like that. Um, or at least tell me how great it is so that I feel more confident picking it up. Next, Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. This one doesn't sound like my kind of thing at all, but I will pick it up if it makes the shortlist. I will read everything on the shortlist for sure. I have no desire to read this one unless it does. It's about a dysfunctional mother-daughter relationship. The mother is a single mother. She travels with her child, but she's very neglectful. And this child grows up in all of these different environments, never really having a home or a place or like a loving present mother. And then she grows up and the mom starts losing her memory. And now this daughter has to take care of a mother who never really took care of her. Uh, I don't know, sounds like a bummer, man. <laughs> but this one was also shortlisted for the 2020 Booker. So there's something to it. It's gotta be good, or it's probably good. I don't know, it doesn't really have to be. Um, but yeah, there's nothing drawing me in, but yeah, it's probably pretty good. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Nothing about this book would have stuck out to me if I had just seen it on a table. So I'm glad that I went through this list and read about all of the books because it's a lot more interesting to me now. This is also cool because it's an own voices book. The author is the first trans woman ever to be longlisted for the Women's Prize. And since it is a story about transgender people, it is important that a transgender author wrote the story. The story is about a couple. Uh, they have like everything. It's going great. They're having a good life. The only thing that they don't have is a baby. After one of them is attacked, they decide to detransition just for safety, to make life easier to live. And that everything falls apart. They break up. I believe they both become kind of sexually promiscuous and they're just, they're going through a hard time. And then in one of the affairs, a baby is conceived and they're gonna see if they can make a family work out of it. <sighs> yeah, so I don't know, sounds okay. I mean, it's a lot of dysfunction and a baby, but I'm pretty sure the baby lives, so. That's really what's important to me at this point. I don't know. To me, the story sounds like it's got dysfunctional relationships, a lot of cheating, um, sleeping with married men, you know, affairs, which aren't really my thing. So I don't know how this book will go for me, but I'll read it. I am sure it will be unlike anything I have read before now. So it's got that going for it. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. 
I was really into this one until about halfway through the synopsis. And then, dead baby. I think the setup and the setting for this book sound really interesting. And, oh man, if... <clears throat> Based on just reading the synopsis alone and also this cover, look at it. I would not be surprised for this one to be shortlisted. And ooh, other than that one thing, I do really want to read it. It is set in Barbados where this woman, well, when she's young, her grandmother is telling her the story of the one-armed sister. And it's like a cautionary tale about what happens to girls who don't listen to their mothers. So this girl, she grows up, she loses her husband and her child, and I guess she draws some sort of strength from this story. Somehow this story is going to work with the whole thing, and I love it when that kind of thing happens. Here, this says, How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House is the story of three marriages and of a beautiful island paradise where, beyond the white sand beaches, and the wealthy tourists lies poverty, menacing violence, and the story of the sacrifices some women make to survive. It's, I think it sounds really good. It's just my own personal sensitivity that is getting in the way of me picking this one up, like right now. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I don't wanna read this book. I have been avoiding reading this book for so long. I don't even know why I don't want to read it. Everyone says it's great. The story sounds great. Mostly, I think it has this feeling like people are going to be really angry at each other and fight a lot. And something about the story and the synopsis, like, I don't know why. It just sounds like it's going to be people fighting the whole time and being really angry. <laughs> I just, hmm, I don't know. I don't know why. I have been told, though, by a friend that she thinks I will like it and that it's not as angry or argue as I am working it up to be in my own head. If it makes a short list, I will absolutely read it. But yeah, I've been putting it off. I almost feel like I've missed the boat on this one, even though the boat's still there and people are like, come on, come on the boat. I'm just like, nah, I'm good, I'm good over here. This one is about twins in a small rural black community in the American South and what happens is one of the twins goes to somewhere and they don't use the black entrance. So it's set in a time when that was a thing. And she passes. And then she learns that she passes for white and she starts using that throughout her life. Whereas the other sister doesn't. So these two girls are starting from the same point. They look exactly the same, but they take two very different paths and make different choices. So yeah, this one's about racial identity and family and it sounds really interesting and it sure has a lot of people saying it's great. So it's probably pretty great. But sometimes you know how a book, it's just not the right time for you and the book. I'm hoping that when I pick this one up, it'll be at exactly the right time for me. That's what I'm hoping. Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. This is another one that had me until it didn't. It sounds really interesting, but once again, it's just got uh, no dead babies. The synopsis has something that tends to really turn a story for me. In this case, our main character enters this family's life, becomes friends with them, and then tries to become the other woman, which, uh, not cool. Maybe there's more to it, I don't know. I haven't read it. It really took me from being excited about it to not being especially interested. But you know what? You aren't me, so I'll tell you about the rest of it and you can decide for yourself. 1957, the suburbs of Southeast London, Jean Swinney is a journalist on a local paper, trapped in a life of duty and disappointment from which there is no likelihood of escape. When a young woman, Gretchen Tilbury, contacts the paper to claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth, it's down to Jean to discover whether she is a miracle or a fraud. As the investigation turns her quiet life inside out, Jean is suddenly given an unexpected chance at friendship, love, and possibly happiness. But there will, inevitably, be a price to pay. See, now I originally read a longer version of the synopsis, which included this. And Jean doesn't mean to fall in love with Gretchen's husband, Howard, but Howard surprises her with his dry wit, 
his intelligence and his kindness. And when she does fall, she falls hard. But he's married and to her friend, who is also the subject of the story she's researching for the paper. A story that increasingly seems to be causing dark ripples across all their lives. And yet, Jean cannot bring herself to discard the chance of finally having a taste of happiness. But there will be a price to pay, and it will be unbearable. <sighs> Still sounded so good, except for that. Luster by Raven Leilani. Oh, this one is so long, it's hurting my back. This one sounds unlike anything I have ever read before. It's about sexual and racial politics, which is kind of heavy, but... You know, not a lot of books on the list are there because they didn't deal with serious issues or I don't know. I don't know what I'm expecting. Get a grip. This one is about a young black woman named Edie who is having a crappy time. Work sucks. Men suck. Her painting sucks. Everything sucks. She ends up meeting this guy named Eric who is a somewhat successful middle-aged white dude who is married. I know you're thinking, Shanna, I thought you said you hate that so much. But here's the thing. His wife has agreed to a open marriage with rules. So Eric and his wife have a daughter who is an adopted daughter who is also black. And there's nobody in this little girl's life who has the same skin or hair as her. So it sounds like Edie gets a chance to be in this girl's life. And I like to imagine that they all live happily ever after. That's, I mean, okay, there's, there's probably more conflict than that, though. Let me dream. We'll see. Nothing But Blue Sky by Kathleen McMahon. McMahon. McMahon? McMahon. McMahon. This one sounds so sad, but I do actually really want to read it. The synopsis is short enough that I'm just going to read you the actual thing. So this is the one that they have on the Women's Prize site. Is there such a thing as a perfect marriage? David thought so, but when his wife Mary Rose dies suddenly, he has to think again. In reliving their 20 years together, David sees that the ground beneath them had shifted and he simply hadn't noticed, or had chosen not to. Figuring out who Mary Rose really was and the secrets that she kept, some of these hidden in plain sight, makes David wonder if he really knew her. Did he even know himself? This is one that I know I will pick up, but I have preemptively given myself permission to put it down if it is too sad. Summer by Allie Smith. This is the conclusion to her series, Seasonal Quartet. So there are three other books, Spring, Autumn, and Winter. And to be honest, the actual synopsis of this book and the covers of them just are big screaming meh to me. But then when I was researching whether or not I had to read the other three to understand this one, that's when the series actually became kind of interesting to me. Here, this is from Penguin Sight. Ali Smith's Seasonal Quartet is a series of four standalone novels, separate but interconnected, as the seasons are, wide-ranging in timescale and light-footed through histories, which, when taken together, give us something more. All four united by the passing of time, the timing of narrative, and the endless familiarity, yet renewal, that the cycle of the season is. So I just think that that sounds like a really interesting way that she did a series. Like from a writing perspective, I think it sounds really, really cool. The actual story in this novel is about siblings and what it means to be a family when you don't really know each other and where family begins. Honestly, it sounds very boring, but it also doesn't give any details to the actual story, like what the conflict is going to be. So for all I know, it's about aliens coming down and them needing to find a time machine to go back in time so that that doesn't happen. That's probably not it. Probably. But it could be because I have no idea. It just says siblings, time, summer. It says more than that, but it's really long. It's really long and it doesn't tell you anything, but check it out. Maybe, maybe you'll read more from it than I did. It just sounds kind of like your average family drama. Hmm. I'll read this one, and then if I like it, then I'll probably go into the rest of the series and see what the heck. Okay, and then the last one on the list, 16 books is a lot of books, y'all, is Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Jesse. I watched 
like four videos where people were saying it. So I think I'm saying it right. Jesse. Her last book, Homegoing, did incredibly well. I have not read it, but that is why when I see her name on this book, I say, ah, she wrote something that was very good and very highly regarded. This one is described as a deeply moving portrait of a family of Ghanaian immigrants ravaged by depression and addiction and grief. A novel about faith, science, religion, and love. The main character in this one is a scientist who is researching addiction after she loses her brother to an opioid addiction after he's injured in his sport of choice. I'm assuming football, but I don't know. It could be rugby, soccer, hockey. I don't know. And their mother also has severe depression. There is an angle to the story where the scientist is longing for the religion that she is no longer a part of from her youth. So I think that's going to be an interesting aspect of the whole thing. Uh, it sounds like a really good one, and I bet it is. So here we go. My predictions for what is going to make the short list based on my guts. I don't got anything else to go by, but I just think it'll be fun to see how I do. So my guesses are Piranesi, because of you. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House, Nothing But Blue Sky, Transcendent Kingdom, and The Vanishing Half. These are the ones that I think are going to make it. This is just me like drafting my fantasy shortlist team based on just my feelings. I will continue reading through the books on this list as I can get to them in the meantime. So maybe they'll shift, but I'm gonna lock these ones in. These are, these are the ones I'm taking the bat. And yeah, we'll see how I did in April when I will do a video on the short list to see what the heck made it. Ooh, and just a note, if you go to the Women's Prize for Fiction website and sign up for their mailing list, you are entered for a draw to win all 16 of these titles. So you should go do that. I hope you don't win because I would like to win. But if I don't, my second choice for somebody to win would be you. Good luck. And if you wish you were still listening to me talk about this, lucky for you, me and my friend Jen have a podcast called The Best Book Club Podcast with Shanna and Jen. We did an entire episode on the long list. So you can go listen to that. We've got lots of other great stuff on there. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. I'll also put information in the description. So that is enough for me. Like the video and subscribe to my channel. I put out videos every single week, pretty much. Ignore last week. Pretty much always I put them out. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time. Bye.